Welcome to UBC's Next Big Thing. I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. Hope you're having a good week so far. My guest today is Chris Willey. He is a PhD candidate here at UBC's Okanagan campus. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Briefly talk about what your research is and, and what took you there. I came here with the goal of studying how changes in blood gases, so uh, the amount of oxygen, the amount of carbon dioxide in your body, how that affects the regulation of blood flowing through your brain. We did that in a number of ways. We started off by doing that here at UBCO uh, in the laboratory by basically changing the gases that people breathe in from canned gas. But then we wanted to apply that to a natural time when this happens. So an obvious one is at high altitude. So that's why we took a, a large expedition of about 25 people up uh, near the base camp of uh, Mount Everest beautiful research pyramid. We used the low partial pressure of, of oxygen there to see what the effects were of, of that and then as well as acclimatization to that altitude mm -hmm. on the regulation of brain blood flow. Have you been able to gather all that research? Have you come up to any conclusions from that or is that still in, in process? Yeah, it's still definitely in process, but uh, I can give you a few little snapshots. Okay. Uh, <laughs> probably the most exciting thing that we found is that as you go up there, your body changes, your kidneys actually, they're wow. responsible for changing how you handle acid-base balance, so basically the, the pH of your body. And that, that changes at high altitude, and we see that that in turn affects your brain's ability to cope with changes in uh, oxygen mm -hmm. and carbon dioxide. And this has real-world applications for people with diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and various other things, heart failure. Our lab isn't applying it to that, but the publications that we'll pull out, they'll certainly be of interest to uh, researchers in those, in those fields. Well, that's very exciting. That isn't the only adventure you've been on recently. Just this year, you went off to Croatia to do some study and some research around breath control underwater breathing. Can you talk about that a little bit? We weren't actually studying them underwater. That would have been even more logistically difficult than uh, the high altitude experiments were. At high altitude, oxygen goes down because you breathe in a lower pressure of gas. The ambient pressure is lower. But breath hold divers who are at sea level, they dive down very, very deep or they'll hold their breath while floating in water or they'll swim underwater for long distances. There's various disciplines. But in all of those cases, they reduce the amount of oxygen in their body. But they do that of their own volition. They, they hold their breaths by themselves. And they can actually desaturate or, or decrease the content of oxygen in their body to even below what we see in climbers at the summit of Mount Everest when they have no oxygen. So they're a fascinating cohort of people to, to study, um, and they're, they're, it was a really nice addition to, uh, to my studies. So how long were you there for and what did you see? What, were you, what kind of experiments were you doing? Most simplistically, we just wanted to know what happens to their cerebral blood flow, to their delivery of blood to the brain mm -hmm. while they're holding their breath that long. Because obviously, you hold, if you hold your breath and you reduce the amount of oxygen in your blood, your brain is starved for oxygen. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very, very sensitive to oxygen, just as if, you, you know, if you've ever gotten up too fast and then fallen over. That's because just transiently, your brain didn't have enough glucose or oxygen and it couldn't handle it. And yet these people, they can go for that long and be otherwise fine. Mm -hmm. And if you or I were to do that, we would probably die. Wow. So we don't know precisely why they were able to do that, but uh, we collected a lot of data and we see that, uh, that they're, they're quite sensitive to the changes in, or the decreases in oxygen, which we didn't expect. And that they have massive increases in cerebral blood flow, up to about 100, 150% of their normal flow. Papers will be published around that again? Absolutely, yeah, I'm Great. working on that as well right now. I'm kind of working on both of them at the same time uh, in preparation for my, uh, my thesis, which I intend to submit within the next uh, month or so. I'm really interested in the mechanisms that make us work. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a lot of interesting studies planned. Some of those are going to take place back in Split in Croatia, because it's a really good group of people that we work with there. And then as well at Duke University, we work with some really smart people there. As well, we've got some great studies planned here. Even though I'm finishing my PhD, I think my, my plan for the next year or so will be more of the same, but uh, that's not a bad thing because it's been a very exciting four years. And it's been exciting to have you here at UBC as well. Thanks for coming today. You're welcome. Thank you. And that wraps it up for this edition of UBC's Next Big Thing. Until next time, I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. Make it a great week.